There are five boxes or labels great guys unconsciously place women into, and when they do, they rarely, if ever, propose to them. To make matters worse, the women who get placed into these categories are mostly unaware of what they're doing or that they're making it next to impossible to find true commitment. So in today's video, I'm going to reveal what these boxes are and better yet, how to avoid ever being placed into one of them. The first thing I'd like to say is that if you get placed into one of these categories, this says nothing about you and your worth. This has nothing to do with your intelligence, with your awesomeness, with your uniqueness, with how valuable you are. Unfortunately, sometimes we human beings tend to do certain things in an attempt to meet certain needs, but when you meet them this way, you're hurting yourself and making it very, very hard for the type of guy you want, thoughtful, insightful, good-looking, conscious, has his shit together, to actually want to spend the rest of his life with you. The second thing I'd like to say is that these boxes are not black and white, which means there's a gradient. The more into the deep part of the gradient you are, the more challenging you're making it for the guy to actually feel this natural pull to want to spend the rest of his life with you. The more on the lighter side you are, the easier you might get along. The third thing I'd like to say before I even start sharing these things is that these are labels or categories that I don't want you to rethink changing for a guy. I'm not asking you to, to think of it in terms of, I want to change myself so the guy likes me. No. What I'm saying to you right now is that if you're able to modify your behavior in the way that serves you best, in a way that makes you most valuable, in the way that makes you shine the brightest, it just so happens that guys of the kind you want are also going to react positively to this. So if you learn nothing else in this video other than I want you to do this for yourself, not to impress him, then you'll be doing it for the right reasons and you'll be changing in a way that regardless of what happens with the guy, you are stepping into the version of yourself that makes you feel really proud. The first label great guys place on women, consciously or subconsciously, that they rarely if ever commit to is the easy one. And here, I'm not just talking about this disgusting double standard we have in the society where some guys get to do whatever they want sexually and women who do that are viewed in the bad light, to say the least. I'm going to talk about a version of that, but also other things that make you the easy one. So I would love for you to think about a guy you connect with as someone who is also discerning as to who he connects with sexually. Obviously, if you connect with a guy who is the type of rock star guy who's having sex with multiple women at a time, I strongly urge you to reconsider if that's the type of guy you want to be with. On your side of the fence, if you're someone who hasn't had the boundaries of saying, I want emotional connection first, I want compatibility first, I want safety first. If you haven't done that and you start doing it, you will see an increase in A, the way awesome guys value you because guys who are intelligent, guys who are worthy are going to value a woman who waits more than a woman who basically says, let's just do it without really knowing who you are. As much as the guy will feel validated, there's going to be a part of his mind that's going to say, well, this wasn't that hard and I may be awesome, but she might be doing that with other human beings, you know, besides me. So it's not that there's anything morally wrong in you doing that. It's just that you want to make sure that you decrease the risk of that guy being really bad for you and increase his level of expenditure of energy, not because you're playing games, because if he doesn't invest on getting to know you and he's going there, he's not going to value you as much. Now, the other way you could be the easy one is if you don't have boundaries, right? If you don't know what you want, what needs to happen for several things to take place from the guy taking you out on a date to the guy physically connecting with you. If you have no boundaries, then guess what? The misogynistic type of guy who wants it his way or the highway is going to be so happy with you because he gets to do with you as he pleases. But the type of guy that you want, the type of guy who has discernment and has choices, he's going to want somebody who can say no to him. He's going to want someone who can say, here's what I need to move forward. He's going to have someone where he has to really put in an effort to create what he wants. Now, here's the caveat to this whole thing. He may not be jumping up and down with excitement when you say, here's what I need to move forward but he'll understand, he'll digest it, and he'll pull through. The thing that happens when you are not the easy one, when you are the not difficult one, but the conscious one, the valuable one, is that great guys will step up to the plate. Guys who are not good for you will self-disqualify 
pretty fast. The second label guys place on women they rarely, if ever marry, is the chameleon. And granted, they're not thinking she's a chameleon. They're just having this sense that you're kind of just going with the flow and have no emotional and intellectual clarity of your own. This happens for two reasons. If you are not really aware or knowledgeable as to who you are and what you value intellectually, spiritually, in terms of philosophical viewpoints, then you might show up in a way where whatever he says goes. Where if he likes punk music, you like punk music that month. If he likes classical music, you like classical music. You become the vanilla version of you. One reason why it happens is if you're unaware of what you want. Other reasons why it happens is you might be aware of what you want, but you might have struggle to get the type of guy you want. So when you see him, erroneously, you start thinking that you have to kind of not rock the boat, that you have to play really safe, that you don't want to cause him to run away if you were to share something that's different or very unique. So you kind of dumb it down or you make it less specific. And when you do that, you're making it so much harder for the right guy to see the uniqueness in you. It's equivalent to saying, I'm a beautiful woman. I'm going to put a paper bag in my head. I'm going to go out and about and see who likes me. I mean, people will like you, but it's going to be a lot harder, right? So what I'm asking you right now is to really go all in into who you are. You, you can be respectful about the whole thing. If you're respectful about your opinion and you're sharing your opinion, your point of view, your likes, your dislikes, your values, your dreams, your hopes, and you're very specific and unique, you become the rocky road or the pistachio or the special exotic flavor, right, of ice cream versus the vanilla version that no one really wants, not even you, because you're also looking for the type of guy who has his own voice, just like he is. Third type of women, <laughs> awesome guys never marry or propose to, is the nag. And the nag is the type of woman who, because she doesn't have strong enough boundaries or she hasn't learned a way to communicate that is effective and kind and compassionate, she takes it upon herself to tell her partner or future partner what he's doing wrong in the form of criticism in the form of just blatant expression without any level of nuance as to what you're saying. There's a few different levels of nag that make it really hard for a guy to want to commit to a woman. And this happens both ways, but since I'm talking to you right now, I'll share in terms of women and men, okay? Imagine that there's something you don't appreciate that he did and you just blur it out. I mean, you did this wrong or why are you doing this? And it's kind of like the essence, the energy of there's something wrong in you. Now, maybe there's something wrong with him, but the way to express it, if you want something other than defensiveness, is different. I'll go there in a second. That's the first level of nag. Second level of nag is when you not only take it upon yourself to criticize him blatantly, but you criticize him and remind him of many times in his life where he's messed up this way. So it's almost like saying, hey, you messed up right now. You've messed up this many times. Now, please change for me. The, the, the likelihood he's going to want to change is very small to none. Now, the third level of nag is when you don't just take it upon yourself to criticize what he's doing right now and share it in a way that he's going to be defensive, most likely, and also share what he's done wrong multiple times in his life, but then you take it upon yourself to go deeper into his character. It's not just that you've messed up, it's that you're lazy, is that you're unappreciative, is that you're really making it about himself. When you attack someone at the level of their character, it's incredibly unlikely that they'll sit down and say, thank you so much for pointing these beautiful things about me. Now I'm going to change for you. It's really, really hard. Now, here's the alternative to that, that you express what you want. First of all, that you have strong enough boundaries so you don't have to feel reactive all the time. There are going to be times where he's going to do something that you don't appreciate, you don't like, that you find disrespectful is talking from your perspective. Instead of saying, you're doing it this way, you're doing it wrong is, I would appreciate if you do it this way for me. I need this to move forward. When you talk from the I perspective, when you share things in a way where you're not making him wrong, but you understand there's a difference between him and his behavior, then he has a chance to step up. Now, if you're saying it in the most conscious way, if you're talking to him in a way that is clear and concise and kind from the I perspective, and he chooses to ignore it, then you can move on. But if you're talking to him in a way that if somebody talked to you that way, you also wouldn't respond positively, and he's not reacting positively, then there's something to work with there. Now, before I share my last two labels or boxes that you definitely want to avoid, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the root cause, not the symptoms while you're still single. What I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every continent, every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, and created a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the answer to the elusive question, why you're still single, and 
will also share with you a custom report based on your specific blind spot as to what's the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse the trend you're on and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fourth type of woman men never propose to is what I call the mother. And there's a beautiful side to mothering, which is nurturing and seeing the best in somebody else. But the dark side of that, especially in a couple, is when you're trying to change him, when you're trying to solve his world for him, where you're talking to him in a way where he's feeling like you are not just telling him what to do, but how to do things. Now, if you're with a guy who has to do a lot of work on himself and he's not doing it for himself, then the best thing you can do is to give him some space or to not be in that relationship. But if you're connecting with a guy who is conscious, who is self-aware, and you're talking to him in ways where you're demanding his change or nurturing him in a way that's overbearing or not giving him enough space to think for himself, then he's going to feel an unconscious or even conscious repulsion to that. No guy wants to sleep with his mom. No guy wants to connect with someone who is trying to solve his world for him or who's trying to make up excuses for him. If you have something to ask for, ask for it. If he changes it and it's something that is really important for you, then stay. If it's a vitally important thing and you can't do without it, then leave. But the thing I ask you, implore you to do is to constantly mold him into your way of being. Constantly tell him what are the things he needs to do if he's not doing them and he's having a hard time with it, please move along. The fifth label, men, place, and women when they can't commit is the ice queen. And granted, there's going to be a range of this. The essence of the ice queen is someone who maybe has been hurt before. Maybe she has good reason not to express emotions, but he is not feeling her. She's playing mysterious sometimes. Sometimes she just seems aloof. Sometimes there's a feeling of entitlement. But really at the core of the whole thing, there's an insecurity, an insecurity of being seen, an insecurity of being rejected. So when you're playing it so safe, and it might be to protect yourself from being hurt, when you're playing it so safe that he doesn't get a chance to feel you and experience you and feel your vulnerability and feel your need for him in your life, then what happens is there's no emotional glue to stick through the inevitable challenges that will evolve in a relationship for him to want to stay with you for life. So if you're one of those women who are playing your cards so close to your chest that no guy gets a chance to really know who you are, I'm not asking you to now reveal everything about yourself. I'm asking you to go one, two, three percent more open than you were before. And then evaluate, pause. If the guy is being respectful, he's being kind, he's being conscious, he's being present, then continue expressing a little bit more. Bit by bit, as if you're doing a slow dance versus having walls and chains and barricades to your heart. Hope this is helpful useful and insightful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel because this is how I grow. It can help more women around the world. If you click like and subscribe, if you find this is helpful, please share it with someone you love. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.